Musky fever is real and it has taken over me. This is my public confession. This could be the one. Feels fishy as hell today. What is up my fellow fishing geeks? Welcome to Geek on the Water. My name is Jacob Nixon and I am your host. And today I'm gonna to share with you my very first muskie on the fly. But I really wanna share with you five of the most important takeaways that I found from fishing for this very elusive species. If you've ever tried for muskie in general, you know it's not a fishery that gets lots and lots of action, but even harder on the fly for some folks. I can attest to that and I'm gonna share that with you. Hopefully you learned something today, and of course, if you're all ate up on musky like I am, you're gonna enjoy just seeing those fish get in the boat. Let's see what happened. Ah, oh, it gets worse every day. I hope we get one. Pardon me a second while I kick out. That was awesome. Ugh. Nothing to see here, eh? Nothing to see here, eh? <laughs> uh, just a little musky fishing. Do I fish you out? Watch your paddle. Can you put the paddle in the boat, maybe? That's a fish. Oh, yes it is. It's a fish. Oh, yes it is. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, I got landed though. Good. I'm bringing it. Is the paddle okay though? Yeah, you're, you're gonna bring it right to here. You're gonna bring him into the crane. I can't tell how big he is yet, but he's not that big. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, this is a nice musky. This nice. my first freaking musky. It's a huge. Oh, there you go. We gotta get him in the boat. We're fine, we're fine. I'm gonna duck, cut him up there. All right, can you get him? Got him hooked great. Oh yeah, got him perfect. Great. I saw him eating everything. Dude, he's a solid 36, something like that. This is exactly Maybe. where I saw that suck. Oh, he's coming at you, coming at you. Tight. Careful, careful. Tight. I'm keeping tight. tight. I'm keeping tight. tight. This is a beautiful fish. Oh, okay. Jake. Come on, come on, come on. Wow. I, wow. Don't, I don't want to force it, you know. I'm just going to take him right over the lip. She's got a lot of power. A lot of power left. A lot of cold water freshness, you know. I don't want to wear her out either, though. No. Nope. It's going to be it. This is it. This is it. Get under. There it is. Scoop and score. That's it. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We did it! All right, hold on. I'm gonna hold this. <laughs> this is it. Got it. Got it. Woo 
That's it. Oh, dude. Couldn't have done it without Brian, so it's a team effort. Woo! Beautiful. Well done, Brian. Well done, man. There he is. Mr. Pinky, tied by Brian Strife himself, the man who was on the oars when the magic moment happened. <laughs> musky! <laughs> Brian, I know you're watching this. We're gonna get you your first musky soon. Probably by the time this video comes out, we'll have it. Point number one is perseverance. This fish is worth it. You're gonna find yourself having to cast multiple, several, maybe even thousand times before you get that first follow, eat, land the fish, whatever it takes. It's gonna take perseverance. So that's the first takeaway I have. That is not unique to muskie on the fly. That's just muskie in general. But anyone who's tried to cast one of these big, gaudy flies um, knows that it's not the easiest task. So it takes even more effort, I think, to get them on the fly and more patience and more perseverance. Can't tell you how many times we stuck sticks and piles of leaves and we're like, that's it, that's the one. It's not happening yet. I'm probably three or four weeks removed from that catch and I'm still in a haze about it. I, I still have that adrenaline running through my body when I think about that catch. That's a fish. Oh, yes it is. It's a fish. Oh, yes it is. Woo so it's worth it. That musky, mmm, mmm, uh, yeah. I think I'm gonna go for some more. And I think you will too once you get your first one. Point number two, I can't emphasize this enough. This is the most teamwork oriented species I've ever came across. The guy that did it all, that helped me get this done, that I owe so much to is Brian Strife. A good partner makes the whole experience turn on everything. You know, there's gonna be a lot of negative times. You need someone who's gonna think positively um, or is okay with your insecurities and their insecurities because before you know it, at some point, good or bad, you're gonna lose <laughs> it's just You're just gonna lose it. You're gonna either get you're mind-numbingly just frustrated at that fish for not eating the fly at the boat. Try this in the tree, baby. Holy <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> You're serious. You saw a fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're going to get so distraught about the fact you haven't seen a fish in six or seven or eight floats. When it comes to the way that I approach these fish, I would never want to do it without a teammate ever again. Number three, leaders lead. Okay, it's not that deep. Actually, what I'm talking about is your gear. You know, you, your leader is the first thing that's gonna be right there at the end of the fly. Of course you need good flies, and I've got all kinds of them. I got a whole fly box right here, full of gaudy flies that are big to small, different types of deer hair, natural, synthetics. You got everything you need in the boat. Trust it, fish what you're confident in, and that, I think, is what's gonna be a really big game changer. You're also gonna wanna have lip spreaders, you're gonna wanna have pliers, and you wanna have bolt cutters. All that's very necessary and unique to this fishery. Not very many fish out there that I know of do you need a bolt cutter on a boat and lip spreaders and giant pliers because fly fishing usually we're not dealing with species like this, but the muskie is definitely one of them. And that's definitely a unique point about chasing your first muskie on a fly. Have the proper gear. When it comes to the fly line, you know, depending where you're at, you might have anything from floating to 450 grain sink tips. Uh, it just depends on where you're fishing and what you need. Your, your rods are gonna be anywhere from nine weights to 12 weights. I use an 11 weight in this video. I'm excited about a new 12 weight that's coming out this year, made by Riz and Fly. I can't wait to get my hands on that, because that's gonna be my new musky rod. Uh, but you're gonna wanna have gear that you trust. Point number four. Man, this, this, this is one that I, coming in, kind of grasp. I didn't really quite appreciate it as much. A found fish is as valuable to me now as a caught fish. Uh, the reason I say that is because the more fish that you know the address of, the more fish you can sell hard to in a float or a drift or when you're on a lake, wherever your fish are located. Knowing where the fish are can be a game changer. Uh, you know, you want to get there at the prime time, whether you believe in the majors and minors or moonrise or certain moon phases. Um, the more addresses you know, you can get to those places at the right time and provide for that fish. Uh, the fish that I eventually caught, I knew and had seen a fish 
similar to the same size as mine, maybe the same fish, a couple of floats ago in the same spot. So when I got there, I was very eager to fish it a little bit longer and spend a little bit more time. So of course we did, and we were there actually at the minor uh, of the day, and also right after a cold front had just swept right in and rained for about 20 minutes while we were out there. Before I caught this fish, I only had one follow that day. So that just goes to show, even if the fish aren't being active, you might still get lucky if you're there in the right place at the right time. Number five, kind of alluded to it in point number four there, is every little nugget of information is like an acorn, okay? And you're a crazy squirrel that is saving up for the winter, and every acorn you see, you're going to collect it. You might even over collect them. And the reason you're collecting them is because when the cold and the dark comes, the middle of the winter comes, and you're down in the dumps, out there in the middle of the water, you're going to line up those little acorns, and you're going to stare at them, okay? And you're going to think, that is why I'm out here. This is it. I, I prepared myself. Uh, and then eventually you're going to sit there and realize that you're actually not a squirrel. You're a human being. And these freaking fish have driven you to the place where you're giving someone an analogy now about squirrels and acorns. All right? All right? Yes, this is a prime example of musky fever. Musky fever is real and it has taken over me. This is my public confession. If you like what you saw in this video, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, we are growing. It's pretty cool. I, I love the feedback. Also comment below with any musky advice you have for anyone watching this with us. Um, and of course, maybe some of your experiences with musky yourself. I look forward to hearing from you all. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.